some ashrams and talking to people and uh, I did not want to submit to a guru mm-hmm. so I just started thinking for myself and did not want to stop and uh, it was within that context that I first came across Jung's uh, commentary to the secret of the golden flower and it seemed to me to offer a point of mediation mm-hmm. i.e. to explore the mysteries but maintaining one's own rational standpoint. Mm -hmm. And that was also my introduction to psychology. Mm -hmm. I just started studying philosophy at university, but I did not know what psychology was. So Mm -hmm. it was the first thought, okay, this is something else. I'm more interested in this. Uh, So that was my initial orientation. I then, you know, went into studying Jung's thought, but more and more fell out of it. I thought, okay, how does this actually work? or why do psychologists not agree about anything and then, but I then got more interested in the history of psychology and always with a focus on Jung to understand how was this thought made and began realising that much basic historical research had not simply had not been done um, and what was starting to look in the archives, the unwritten histories seem to be much more interesting than the written histories mm-hmm. and seem to contradict much of the received opinion. I'm unaware I never stopped doing that. To the, the second part of your question, uh, I would say I continue to explore uh, in my own way uh, aspects of the Indian tradition mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. and I, I travel there uh, relatively frequently in terms of put it, historical um, familial ancestral historical Uh, and 
stress more active reading in terms of engagement. In a way, I mean, it, it's who himself who quite clearly states uh, his engagement with with Nietzsche, with Schopenhauer, with von Hartmann, with Karras, with the 19th century uh, German philosophical tradition. concerning you where the lawyer is identifying pages and pages of, of statements and that he's saying you know, these statements should come out because they're, they're defamatory and Jones's reply is uh, uh, from what I know of, of Jung like Freud uh, he would never bother to enter a, a, a litigation otherwise in a way they would have never got out of the law courts if they if they, did, if they did that sort of thing, uh, and but but if he does, I'm quite willing to pay all the costs myself. <laughs> you could just see this fantasy of Jones wanting to sort of rerun the battles from fifty years ago in a court of law. <laughs> or there's this point when uh, some research is showing that I think some of the figures, I think it's Albert Moll, uh, has died. And, Let's hope there's some more fatalities. Mm -hmm. so he's, he's wanting these people dead so he can defame them <laughs> at liberty. So that gives you a, a sense of the, uh, the character of Ernest <laughs> Jones. So what, he, what became then, which is the, the important point, the standard biography, his three-volume uh, biography, The Life and Work and Sigmund Freud, it's a polemic. But he had access to material that no one else had. So it became the definitive work on Freud, but it was a legend. It's like a, it's continuing the battle. Mm -hmm. It's like the victor writes the history. Mm -hmm. Everyone else is silent. That remains the, the, the version for, for many decades. It still is, absurdly, the, the most comprehensive biography of Freud. You still have to use it. I belong, I belong to you so much with directly with Jung's own research because what Jung did was uh, a psychological analysis uh, he never met her uh, and in a way it was using her material to elaborate his own theories and as he himself said in 1925 in a seminar uh, he projected his material into Frank Miller an analysis of it led to his own would lead someone to his own unconscious processes. When I first read that, that then made me very curious. And who the hell was this woman? And what relation did she have to all of this stuff? And Jung noted in, and he noted first in the uh, second edition in the nineteen twenties that uh, after the war, the physician who treated her had said that. Uh, everything in uh, Jung's book turned out to be completely true and then she uh, afterwards suffered from schizophrenia and that this, in a way that Jung's book had predicted it. That was the, that was the point to me of 
of my research, which was not that was not borne out by the research. Mm -hmm. the, the psychiatrist was completely unreliable, and there was no trace of any diagnosis subsequently of schizophrenia. In a way, it's, it's a double situation. On the one hand, Jung is saying in his 25 seminar, everything, it's actually not, I didn't know this woman, it's all about my own inner processes. But at the same time, he was taking what the psychiatrist had said, oh, but it's also all about the woman. You, know, you, you can't have it both ways. Mm -hmm.